This is a Mystery Tackle Box Spray. What do we have this month? Let's see. 10,000 fish. Cycle bait. That looks cool. Looks heavy. Maybe. Okay. Three eighths of an ounce. Can't paint that. Can't paint these. Can't paint those. Nope. Super cool. Definitely going to be using these. Very cool. You're it. Strike Pro looks like a wake bait tournament grade. This is probably a sub company of Catchco itself, more than likely. But this looks like a pretty solid lip. Looks like maybe a 6.5i. Now the question is, what do I want to paint on it? First thing we're going to do is pull off the uh, gear. So we're going to get these hooks off. These look like number two hooks. So it's pretty big bodied crankbait, wake bait which is pretty cool and let's see how quickly we can get these off I always marvel at people that tell me they like do three or four hundred in an hour um, I'd love to see that because I've been doing this for years and I, I think I'm fairly proficient but that's like beast mode fast it's like a game cheat fast if you can do it like that so good on you if you can Love to see that. Love to see like some of the professionals out there that do it for a living. Just put on split rings. There's got to be like people that specifically put split rings on stuff. Go to the old trusty. This is an old doll. And I know they're pretty eyes. Yeah, I could probably tape over them, but I've got really cool tricked out eyes that I want to put on whatever it is that I end up making. Why is this not coming out? This is glued down. Good on you, Mr. Tackle Box. These eyes would have never come off this bait. <laughs> we got the eyes off. Now we just need to fire up the old air compressor and get to work. I'm still figuring out what I want to do. I have absolutely no idea what I'm spraying yet. Be right back. It's a California Air Tools 8010. It's an 8-gallon oilless tank compressor. It's awesome. It's been running strong for me for almost three years. Thank you, Gerald Novick, for recommending it. I use it every day, and I love it. If you want a link, I'll drop one below. So we got the fan on. We're ready to go. I've got the bill taped up. For this, because we already have this beautiful blue tent and foil, some green on the back on this wake bait, I'm going to go ahead and do a freestyle bluegill, and it's one of my favorite patterns to do. It's been a while since I've done a bluegill pattern, and it's been even longer since I've used mesh. But we are going to go ahead and mesh this up and uh, just kind of wrap this bait in this freestyle mesh. A lot of you guys ask what kind of mesh I use. This is the stuff. You can find it in the link below for the Amazon affiliation links, but it's really good comes in about uh, a 12 yard spool it's roughly six to seven inches wide so let me get this meshed up tightened and I'll be right back on camera I've got this mesh super super tight got a bunch of alligator clips on the bottom of that all of the stuff that I use is generally listed in the description below under affiliation links a lot of them come from Amazon some of them do not um, but it does help me sustain my channel I've got these gloves have a tendency to get fairly messy but a lot of you are going to ask a few questions on stuff like this we are just taking the bait we are not doing anything else to prep it it's got foil on it it's already been clear coated so we should have fairly decent adhesion to this uh, but we're going to use what's underneath to our advantage in this pattern which is really cool so these lines through this mesh once the mesh is peeled off and our pattern is on there are going to help portray what we want in the foil and give it a little bit of extra pop and flash. I am going to put a white prime over top and as long as you shoot light enough you should get pretty decent layering through this mesh. Just hit it at a 90 degree angle, just come straight at the bait. 
for layering these up. Try and get as much covered as you can. You can use a pretty light layer. This is an opaque primer. Um, this is a little bit what I have left over from the original blend that I've done in the past. But I want to go ahead and clean that out of the chamber. And we're not going to heat set as we put the colors on top of one another. This is going to be a fairly simple process. And I get comments a good bit of the time. I get comments that ask for me to be as specific as I can on the coloring. So one thing that might help you guys... And, and I've done it in the past. It's been a while since I have done it. Um, sometimes just because I forget. So it's okay to remind me of stuff. We'll leave the colors out here on deck for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing as we go along. This is just an opaque white. The next color that I'm going to be using, my traditional going from light to dark, is going to be an opaque, wicked, golden yellow. Now there's a little bit of transparency to this, but not much. Usually the detail colors are a little more full-bodied. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just make just a little bit of like a semicircle, just kind of go around in a curve on this portion of the belly, and then just a little bit on this rear flank on both of these sides. So we've got two sections pretty much lined up evenly on both sides of the bait. And then just a little bit on the top here. Now we're going to kind of cover those as we go along, um, but not completely because we kind of want to blend as well. So again, this is wicked golden yellow detail. One of the reasons that I keep a rag in my hand when I'm cleaning out the chamber is that we want that airbrush to shoot clear when we're changing colors out. I don't always do it, but when I, I want to get a fresh, clean color, I always put enough of the cleaner in here to go ahead and make sure it runs through clear. Now on this, I have just a little bit of a mixed up color. And of course, as I'm saying, I'm going to tell you what the colors are. This is a, a combination of a couple of colors in order to get it. I use white. I use an FW ink, and the color of this is light green, and it's a real pretty, you can see that this got a little bit of yellow in it, but this is almost too yellow, so in order to tone this down, I go with just a little bit of a darker pearlized ice. So blending these three colors together, I'm going to get something that kind of looks like this, and I want to make sure that it's got thin enough quality to it that it'll still shoot. And from time to time, I, you know, I'm, I use this color often in some of my bluegill stuff. So I just want to make sure that it, uh, since I put it into a cup, that, it, that I can get a good shot out of it for the airbrush. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this because we don't need much for this bait. Just a little bit that just a couple of drops probably too much there but that's okay now I kind of made a path in order to get through this so I'm going to come from the back on the bottom and I'm just going to make one stripe between the two areas of yellow do the same thing on the other side and just a little bit not the whole way but just a little bit onto the top so we have a little bit of uniformity on this bait. Now again, I want to make sure that I'm shooting clear. I've still got just a little bit of residual in here. There we go. that color on deck and I'm also sorry about that 
I'm also going to keep how I mixed that green on deck as well because that might be beneficial for you guys. The biggest thing is that you want to kind of keep it a mint green, like that Briar's mint chocolate chip ice cream, that color green. It seems to work out very well on some of the patterns for bluegill. Next, we're going to be using this Detail Burnt Sienna. Not as dark as a sepia, not as orange as an orange, but when you put it against this yellow here, and again, this is going to be a random spray as well, put it right up under the throat. It's blending together, kind of melding together, and almost making it look orange, even though it's really not. We'll put a little bit down the back here and run that all the way across the top. Put a little dot there and in the top back right here. Should be pretty good. It's fairly uniform as well. Maybe just a little bit of darker there. Now we've got our, pretty much our base colors for this bluegill that I'm doing. And it's still, remember that there is some silver foil, some blue tint underneath these cheeks, and that's gonna work out pretty well, I think. That's running clear again. While I'm here, let me get the top back on this so it doesn't get dry and thick on me. Just set this back off to the side a little bit. Now there's one thing that I want to try. I haven't tried it before, so you guys are going to be my, my test guinea pigs along with me. I picked up, and I think I talked about this briefly in maybe one of the updates. I've picked up some kind of fun colors. It's folk art, so it's not very expensive. And this is a dragonfly glaze. It's not a hardcore color. It's, a, it's sort of like a white-ish pearl color. And I think I want to do this reddish into blue instead of this gold into purple. So I just want to see what it looks like. Go ahead and see it's brand new. I have yet to take this off and play around with it. So I want to see what this is going to do if we put this on externally. Of course it's going to give me problems, so that's what good knives are for. It's a Kershaw. I like my Kershaws. Still a lot of army in me, y'all. It might not be completely ladylike, but it is country, and I'm all about that. So as a glaze, two things I'm concerned about. Number one, how is it going to be for cleanup in the airbrush? We're going to discover that together. Number two, once I shoot it with a medium, because I am going to use an airbrush medium from Golden in this. I'm not going to use a whole bunch. I just kind of want to get an idea how this is going to shoot. So this is a Golden airbrush medium that I'm adding into this Dragonfly Glaze. I'm going to put the two back here that we're not going to be using. So equal parts. Mix this together real good. And I'm going to set it off to the side. We're not quite ready for it yet. I just want it to get happy. And uh, I want to know what it looks like when I shoot it. And I'm going to glaze the entire bait with one layer of this. Just to see if we can see kind of you know, like an impact. How this is going to... If it has any effect on the bait at all. I kind of like what it's doing, the way it looks. It seems to be pretty cool. Now, to the sides and the cheeks, just a little bit feathered across the back. I'm going to come at an angle because they're 
has to be a little bit of dimension to this bait. So I'm going to shoot right across the back of the bait, not straight at it, but I'm going to bring it down, shoot along the side as flat as I can, just to get a little bit of texture and dimension to it. off our mesh here this is detail black magenta I generally put detail black magenta on stuff hey Mike I'm gonna run this right across the top of the back kind of blend this in get a little bit it almost against the blue turns a purple which is a good thing along the back just a little bit here just at the edges of the gill plates So while I still have this detail black magenta loaded into the cup, I'm going to pull the pressure down to about 10 to 15, somewhere in there. And I'm going to make just a couple of vertical lines, similar to what you would see on a bluegill. And I'm going to use the um, use this little cutout as a backdrop and try and keep this as close as I can to actually spraying down the edge of this little stencil. Now it looks like it's going to be darker, but that's only because you've got all this mesh. Once I peel that mesh off, some of this is going to come off and that's okay. We kind of want to mute this color down and remember we're going to put a glaze over this. I'm also going to do this on the other side. Just four, four lines. Now the one that's near the gill plate and the cheeks, you only want to go halfway. Um, that's that vertical line on that part of it is going to be a little bit more muted than the rest. Now as far as where I got this, this little stencil, I've been using this for a long time. I use it randomly here and there on different uh, different baits. But when I come back down the other side, I want to make it lighter if I can, just to kind of mute it out even further. Just give me a little bit, but it's going to be considerably lighter and a thinner spray than the other side. back the same way on the other side of the bait. And remember to go half on that top one. So while it looks like we have very prominent lines that will disappear when we pull that mesh out, we're getting ready to do that here shortly. Randomly drop in a couple more. Clean this out. And heat set. Got good heat set on there. About 60 seconds worth, maybe a little longer. We're going to pull this mesh off. And we're going to drop that glaze onto this. Seems to look pretty cool. It's an interesting pattern. this dragonfly glaze that we're going to drop onto the bait just to kind of mute the colors a little bit 
and I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but that original blue foil that's underneath is looking pretty good. As Mike just said, juicy. Spoken like a true YouTuber. Well, I'm curious as to whether or not this is going to behave like... Uh, it's actually kind of cool. That is awesome. You can see all the blue fleck in here, but that's pretty dope. I'm really liking how it looks. Good general cover. This is going to need a seriously long heat set at the end of this. I'm going to cover this entire bait in this glaze. And it's it's kind of translucent enough to where you can still see that foil that was underneath, but it's heavy enough to where it's given it this beautiful pearl overlay. I'm seriously impressed with this stuff. Curious as to whether or not it's going to shine as much when it's dry, but we're going to heat set the bejesus out of this thing, and I'll be right back on camera. Okay, we have got this dragonfly glaze on here. It's very subtle. I do like it. I think maybe you guys can see a little bit of it in this light here, but I'll get uh, I'll get the 4K iPhone Pro out and give you some pictures of it. So we're kind of down to the very last part of this bait. Now this is a, a traditional, my twist on a traditional bluegill pattern. Now we didn't use any of the orange, but this um, burnt sienna along with that that golden detail really does kind of give that orange appeal to it. I would normally just put an ear flap on it and call it good, but I am going to give it a little bit of that light blue that you'll see on a bluegill's, uh, the edge of their, their gill plates, their cheeks. So let's get this little ear flap on here first and then we'll start the detailing. Now one thing that I always keep handy is one alligator clip and it's holding this little circular, well it's not complete circle, but I've cut out an ear flap for smaller baits like crankbaits, but it also has, and I'm not going to use it on this one, but it also has a, a little bit of a rounded edge to where I can come sit it down on the edge of a gill plate and just if I want to give a little bit of depth to it, I can shoot a darker color against that gill plate and give it that impression of being kind of jumping out of the bait as, a, as an actual gill would flare out. So that's one thing that you can do and I just keep it on the desk at all times. I'm going to add some jet black for these ear flaps and I'm going to turn the pressure way, way, way down. So the cool thing about these alligator clips is that I can just lay this against the edge of this gill plate right around the lateral line, which is generally where you see these ear flaps, either right at or just above the lateral line is where the, the bluegill's ear flaps are going to be. Turn it on the other side. lay this down again. Just line it up with the edge of that gill plate. There we go. And now you have a real nice clean ear flap. I am going to grab this white here and just um, shake it and I'm just going to pull this top off. And then I'm going to grab my light blue here and we're going to bring this bait over to the desk. You can see I've got a lot going on. My desk is normally, I'm, I'm pretty OCD about keeping it clean, but this week has been a particularly busy week. So I've got, uh, I've got a trash desk. Sorry about that folks. Please forgive me. I hope that I'm able to teach you guys stuff during the course of these videos. I hope that you're getting the same amount of value from me that I get from you guys 
um, through your commenting and the communications that we have and the various forms of social media um, I really love hearing from you guys and I love seeing the baits that you that you uh, message me and what we're doing here I've done this before on a couple other videos it's been a while since I've done uh, a pretty complex gill uh, I normally do simple ones and I don't do a whole lot of them but um, I was just in the mood and this is the perfect size bait the perfect body bait to do something like that on so with this I just want to bring a very thin this is a double zero and you can see I use it a lot because I've got tape so I can get a good grip on this put my index finger my pinky finger on the bait itself because it's been heat set and just gently go from the gill plate all the way around and then you've got that white spot that you see that little white line underneath that black ear flap and then go the same way on the opposite side I just kind of finish that up now if you this is not as pretty as the one I did on the other side most times you'll have a dominant side and a weak side when you're painting I don't know why that happens but it's fairly common and you shouldn't worry about it so we're gonna let that dry I'm not going to wipe it off but I'm going to show you how to fix it so that'll be your second tip for the day um, put this back in the cradle real quick while I do this move this over to the side and then I can leave the white in here it doesn't matter if that gets a little bit of white into this blue mix so now all we're doing are the little blue edges on these cheeks which you would normally see and I'm not going to do real heavy on this because I really like the way the orange turned out even though we didn't use any orange at all but I, I'm kind of digging it so I want to still be able to see that so what I'm doing here is I'm just bringing a little bit of blue into the edge of this gill plate filling out these cheeks put a couple little random dots through here not making that too heavy to where it's gonna look like doo-doo and then because there's a wake lip that's set a little bit further back than you would normally so like on a on a crankbait your your lip is going to be a little bit further out and angled on a wake bait it's usually a little bit wider you want that water displacement so we can go ahead and just above this lip here put a couple more little dots here just to kind of fill out that blue and then as we come over just use your pinky and and one of your other fingers to give you a little bit of stability as you do the same thing on the other side of this bait on this bait I think a seven is going to be pretty much the right size for this 100% seven so I'm going to use the living eyes fish skulls seven fire it's a little bit more subdued I don't want to blow color out on I've done some that are really cool with a real bright red eye like this one right here I want to kind of tone that down a little bit on this bait just so it's not obnoxious just add a little bit of the super glue and that does help keep the eyes on and just make sure you give it a little bit of drying time before you put that clear coat on so the chemicals don't get real crazy now generally I like to go ahead and pull the tape off of the lip prior to putting the eyes on And I'm sure that some of you guys, if you're signing your names, are not using the same stuff that I do. So one of the things that I'm going to try and do a little bit more of this year is play around with other 
pens that I can sign my name with that are waterproof, light fast, and won't bleed into clear coat. The reason I use what I use with this Uniball is that it provides all of the things that I need. It signs well. You drop down at a 45 degree angle here. It does not bleed. Um, and it stays pretty well on this bait. So we're going to sign it off as an MTB number 15, a one and done. I won't be making any more of these. So this is that limited mystery tackle box spray. Pretty much in the books right now. Super happy with it. I think it's a cool pattern. I hope you guys think it's a cool pattern. I have really enjoyed doing this one with you guys. And I'm going to let that sit right there and get these eyes on. And these seven should work out very well for this bait. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me on the channel today. I've really enjoyed this spray session with you guys. We can call it a mystery tackle box repaint. It's in the books. It is also a small waters. You can find these bluegill just about everywhere, um, except for super cold water. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you how to fix getting too much of this line. So just take this light fast pen, whatever it is that works for you, and go into this little ear flap and just smooth that out. And that just make that redefine that edge with the pen and that generally works very well that's all I've got for today I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week day evening afternoon whenever it is that you guys are watching this video thank you so much for hanging out with me it has been a fun one for me I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed trying to teach you I hope you've learned a few things and if you enjoy what you see here smash that thumbs up button for me it really means a lot to me to know that you guys like what my content is and if you would love to be a sustaining member of the channel think about patreon for me because it does help me provide supplies so that I can continue to bring you guys fresh content now we do have some stuff in the works for tomorrow I'm not gonna tell you what it is I'm doing or who I'm doing it with but it's gonna be a lot of fun we're gonna make a video out of it and I will see you on the next one cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Stay tuned for that footage. I'm going to bring that to you at the end of the video in 4K. See ya.